East of West often tops lists as one of the greatest image comics of all time, but the one word that I hear most from readers is overrated. So which one is it? Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus aka the Mad Dog and we're back with another review. Written by Jonathan Hickman and illustrated by Nick Dragotta, the first issue of East of West was published by Image Comics in March of 2013, with the 45th and final coming out in December of 2019. This creative team had worked together before over at Marvel on FF, but they knew that they always wanted to do something creator owned together. Hickman had the idea of doing a western for some time and he approached Dragotta about the project, but he said he wanted his next work to be drawing something science fiction, so a compromise was met and a hybrid of the two was born. The debut issue sold out in its first week and the volume 1 of the trade paperback series topped the charts of Diamond's best sellers. In 2013 it won the Diamond Gem Award for the best new series and was named as one of Digital Spy's top 10 comics of the year. Since the series concluded a few years ago it has remained relevant and popular thanks in most part to these three beautiful deluxe editions that sit behind me which you can still pick up from our sponsor Organic Price Books. But East of West seems to have divided readers with fans of the series saying that this is one of the best books that Image Comics has ever published and others saying that it's overly convoluted and doesn't manage to live up to the hype. All I can do is give my opinion and that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. This is me TLDW, it's a part of the video for people who maybe don't have time to watch the full thing but you still want to know if this book's for you. And if you're somebody who likes stories that are more about the lore of the universe rather than having a clear or linear plot, then this would definitely be one for you. As East of West delivers a fascinating world but you never really get the sense that it knows what it wants to focus on or that you ever really get to see all that it has to offer. And if that's all the review that you needed, thank you for tuning in, make sure that you click that subscribe button below so that you never miss a video. And we've also got our own reddit page, r slash community, so make sure that you follow us there because there's going to be a discussion on this book. And feel free to check out one of my previous reviews, but if you want a bit more of an in-depth review, let's start by taking a look at the plot. How on earth do I summarise this one? The plot is so dense that the book starts with an explanation of the plot. Let's just give this a go. In 1908, a comet hits Kansas City during an alternate timeline America where the Civil War hadn't ended. The six warring factions then sign a treaty. I'm not going to list them all here because I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but a new America is then born with seven different nations. On this very same day, two figures within the opposing armies prophesize what would become known as the message, which details the apocalypse, and then they die immediately after this. Since then, the four horsemen of the apocalypse have manifested on earth and look to bring about the end times. But as the years have gone by, tensions have built between the seven nations. Chaos is inevitable. Death has a vengeance along with a new quest. The judicial system is being turned upside down and trust is rarer than finding someone who doesn't know about the message. From there, the book follows many different characters, some that are trying to bring about the apocalypse and some that are trying to do anything to prevent it. There's also people that are caught up in the middle and there is one man that is just simply trying to find his son in this crazy world. Technology continued to develop, but our sensibilities and the way that we treat other people is still stuck in the ways that we had during the Wild West. But what happens when one of the horsemen betrays his own kind? Do we have any control over our own future, or was it set in stone on that fateful day in 1908? And does the apocalypse even mean anything, if we're just going to destroy ourselves before it could ever happen? I've read the Fantastic Four one that Dragotta did the art for along with Hickman and I was much more impressed with his work here. I couldn't remember too much about his contribution in FF but it could have been more because that was towards the end of the run after a long line of other great artists so it was great for him to get the spotlight here and he really went for it. A large part of that is also due to the colours from Frank Martin but there was just so much energy in the illustration of this book. It's funny because some of my problems with the series were solved by the art so it might make more sense after you hear the rest of the review but because of the character designs everyone was memorable and stuck in your head after only a few panels. As well, for such an interesting mix of genres, the tone doesn't come across as a mismatch and I think that that's largely in part because of Dragotta's art. The sense of setting was amazing throughout and I love the juxtaposition between scenes in the desert and then when you're in the more futuristic cities. Action was done well also and he had a great way of telling the story through it and it was always clear what was going on. It's just a shame that he didn't have as much of a chance to explore more types of action scenes because the script would often just prefer to tell rather than show. But because there was so much dialogue, it gave gave Dragotta a chance to really show how he can illustrate emotion and facial expressions. Admittedly, some characters showcase this better than others, but for a story that was so dense, it was quite helpful to have someone that could tell the deeper parts of the story through their art. I can't lie, and it's probably clear already, but I really enjoyed the art from start to finish, and there aren't many criticisms that I can point out, which I know is rare for me. His line work was great, the designs of all these crazy factions, and just the way that he detailed motion when people were travelling. None of it was ever less than stellar, and I feel like he gave 
me vibes that were similar to like a Ryan Stegman or maybe even a Ryan Otley. So I really hope that we get to see Dragotta on another series soon and it was probably my favourite part about East of West. Again, like I've said in previous reviews, I have to mention that I'm a stupid reader. I'm not some highbrow connoisseur who cares more about a book's meaning than the actual plot. First and foremost, I want to be entertained. So my thoughts on East of West don't align with the majority of other people, but I'd rather give my honest verdict than just say what everyone else thinks. And I have to start this by saying that the majority of this book just felt like a pronoun game. You couldn't go more than a few pages with it just being deliberately cryptic, with everybody talking about the message, the book, the way, the people, the chosen, the city, the word, the boy. Like that kind of thing was cool at first and it helped to build some intrigue but as I was getting into the second book I was just really bored of this. As well there was just way too many characters and it felt like all of them were trying to be the main protagonist. I get that this is an epic sprawling story kind of like the Game of Thrones of comics but very few of the characters left a lasting impression on me and if I'm being real the majority of them just fell into two categories. They were either cool or they were cruel. Actually there was a third category that I'm just going to classify as just there and was some of these characters, such as John Freeman, I actually wanted more time with them. Because he in particular felt like he could have been more interesting, but instead they just decided to tick a few boxes so that he could be a cool character and nothing else. The Ranger was another character like this who felt more like an enjoyable GTA side character than someone who was truly integral to the plot. But I'll speak more about him in the spoiler section. And another thing that really bothered me was that the majority of the action happens off camera. Especially in the first book, there's more meetings about stuff that has happened than showing us stuff that's happened. Happened. I'm always going to be the type of person that prefers to be shown something rather than told, but especially in this first book, factions would talk about invasions or battles that sounded interesting, but that was all we knew of them. And I gave it a bit of a pass originally because it was fun that this world was so messed up and war-torn that some things are just a footnote in a conversation, but with a medium where you can show whatever you want, a conversation shouldn't really be at the top of that list. But to give it credit, that was remedied as the book went on, and the important stuff at the end was shown, but as I was trying to get into the series, I couldn't help but feel a bit let down by it. As well, to go back to the characters, everyone speaks philosophically and dictates what the subtext of the book is. I get it, Hickman has a deeper meaning, but it's not really a deeper meaning if literally every character expresses everything they think about war and the impact that it has on mankind. I kept wondering if the script was just ad-libs, but you have to just change the character and which cryptic pronouns you use. As well, in case there's anybody that hasn't read this book just yet, I stopped reading the prose pages and they kind of ended up being like the pirate part of Watchmen. And I'm not going to lie, the retail price of these books would have been cheaper if they left them out. Again, I get that this is a rich, thought-out book to the point where it needs a guide in the back of the first book to help you keep track of everything, but these prose pages that happened a few times in every single issue were just self-indulgent. If this was supposed to be the message, then I get why people died after creating it. I think I read the entire first year's worth of these pages, and I know what you're thinking, that there was literally only a couple of words on each page, but after the first couple, I realised that I wasn't learning anything towards the story as a result of them, and I have to get told that I'm overly critical in my reviews, which I sort of get, but for me, what's the point of making a video where I don't really say what I think? And I get why some people love this series, and I didn't hate it, it just had some things in it that weren't for me. And not every story on this planet isn't gonna be for me, which I recognise because some of my favourite runs are hated by other people. And that's fine, and there were still some things that I did really enjoy about East of West. So I thought I'd get my negative points out of the way first, and there is one really great plotline in this, which is simply a father that's trying to find his son and evade the law. And I'd say that this is about 40% of the overall book, so I really liked about half of the series. It showed that there was some actual heart to East of West, which was a welcome break from everybody just talking about war. And I think that the Sun character in particular was really great at introducing us into the world, but again, I'll speak more about that in the spoiler section. There was also just a really good grasp on the tone, which I have to give it major credit for. Like sometimes when people have a concept that's like, oh it's the world, but it's medieval times and carrots taste like potatoes. It often and plays out as bad as that example probably would. On paper, a futuristic western apocalyptic war story shouldn't work. Even as I'm saying it, those words don't really make sense together, but somehow, with what Hickman and Dragotta brought to East of West, I never questioned it or felt like the world wasn't authentic. And as disappointed as I am with some of the things that I've pointed out here, I did find myself interested in this world and the continually corrupt system that's in place. I just felt like it didn't take that time they probably needed in the beginning to get you invested in any of the 
factions or characters, except maybe death. And that was important for me so that it could pay off in the end. I think this may be the first book that I've done a review for, where I really feel like a second read through after some time would be beneficial. Because that's why Hickman's Fantastic Four and Avengers series worked so well. It wasn't just because of a great story, but because you already knew who Reed Richards and Captain America were, so the story didn't have to spend too much time building them up. And it could just run into a more complex idea, it didn't have to take that time to get you invested. However, East of West doesn't have that same luxury and I think it was a bit of an oversight on this book that it just assumed from the beginning that it gave you enough to be invested. Because as I got to the end of the first book, I was thinking to myself, why would I care if the apocalypse happened? To contrast this, in Fantastic Four there's a huge death that works because of the fact that we know these characters and that isn't something that can be taken for granted. But still, I have to just make a separate point, I know we already just kind of touched on it, but there is great world building throughout this book. And even if somebody was a devout hater of East of West, I don't think they could deny just how great Hickman is at building up a place. And I just got that sense that there was more about this world that Hickman was aware of, but we weren't told. When we see the John Freeman family, for example, I thought we were going to get more of the history there because it felt like stuff had happened before this scene started, rather than the characters just waiting for the plot to need them. I just wish that that would have carried over to some other characters because it's obvious that Hickman loved this world that he built, which is why I'm not surprised that some people do rave about this series, even if I don't have those same feelings as I reflect on it. But one thing that I was really happy about was that the ending does redeem the book, so it gave me that sense that the parts of the journey that I wasn't really too happy about as we were going along it, we're worth it for the destination that we got to. And I've had this discussion with a few people, but is it better for a book to have a great journey but a bad ending, or to have a bit of a dull journey but a great ending? And it's just nice that for once I'm not saying that an image title doesn't stick the landing, which feels like it's some kind of miracle. And it's even more impressive that I was entertained by this climax because of the fact that I wasn't that invested in most of the early part of this story. The big war at the end was just really enjoyable to read, which I think just adds to what I'm saying about maybe this being better on a second read, because had I cared about the factions and the developments that led to the fights, I imagine this would have been a completely different experience. But can't really say too much more about the ending without jumping into spoilers. When I did my last review on Ex Machina, even though I didn't love the book, I was still looking forward to doing the review because there was so much that I wanted to talk about and vent. It's weird though because I haven't been excited to review East of West because not a lot of it really stuck with me. But the real saving grace of East of West was the relationship that Death had with his son Babylon. If anything, had the story opened with Babylon and him emerging into this weird, futuristic western world, but at the same time you've got Death searching for his son and it didn't just lump on this history of the treaty, I'd have probably been more invested from the beginning. Don't worry, I'm not trying to teach Hickman how to write because more people have read his books than mine so, you know, I'm gonna sit down and take a bow at this one, but feel like Babylon was really the core of this entire narrative, but it wasn't until later on in the book that he became the focus. But then again, had we been following the character who was the subject of a prophecy, it probably would have felt like every teen book that came out in the last 20 years. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with the way that Hickman decided to tell this story because at the end of the day, it's his vision. It's just, I think it would have solved that problem that I had that I wasn't really intrigued about a lot that was going on for the most part of the first year of this book. And that sequence as well when Babylon first emerged and just mashed up Conquest who I think was the blue one was one of the most fun parts of this book because I wasn't a massive fan of the horsemen except for death but technically I don't really count it because of the fact that he abdicated. Babylon's connection with Balloon was really unique as well and I love those moments when we got to see his perspective and how the world's been painted. I know for a fact that if this had been a Brian K Vaughan title that's what the entire first issue would have looked like until we had the reveal of the real world in the final page. As a result of this storyline, I loved how they explored the effect that Babylon being held captive had on Death and Mao. Her being imprisoned and thinking he was dead was just a great layer to this plot and I'm glad that the book had them reunite at the end. It's like I said in the spoiler section, this was the best storyline in this book. It's just a shame they only really started as we got to the end of book one where I felt like it was already a bit too late and I was already starting to mentally check out. It's difficult because I'm so torn on this book and how I felt about it overall because there's specific moments that I really liked but then there'd be a general repetitive problem that would keep cropping up. So I think it's more just that it didn't live up to what everyone was saying because Death's whole plotline was enjoyable. I really liked the parts after he'd been reunited with Babylon and we saw a different side to him rather than just being constantly ruthless. Although I can't lie, I did like those scenes where he kept going back to that bar and just tormenting the owner and his final battle against the other horsemen meant more to me than the war between the factions. 
Marines. Because if I'm being honest, I can't even remember who was fighting who in the city. Another thing though, the Ranger's whole arc was a fun part of East of West. He was pretty much just a Texan Judge Dredd. I'd be down for a spin-off that's set before this, just about him going across the country and just handling things in his own way. Him being a character going after the Chosen also helped me to understand the overall plot a bit better, so if they didn't want to go with Babylon, he could have also been a good entry character. But this is what I was saying about the cast being overcrowded because you could often go many issues without seeing him, and it was as if Hickman was trying to do every type of storyline so that there'd be something a reader could enjoy, but if you didn't love all of it, you'd just be left waiting for the part that you like to come back around. Still, the Ranger's final showdown with Chamberlain was fantastic. I didn't realise how badly I wanted this confrontation or how much I cared about it until this part came around, and I'm so glad that he'd won. Chamberlain had been built up as this unbeatable foe, and it was as if the reputation that that brought with it got the better of him. When we got a glimpse at this world's messed up judicial system too, that was unique, but again, we didn't get enough time with it. I have to say though, I was disappointed by the John's assassination fake out, because I like John, and I'm okay with characters I'm fond of dying, but if it makes sense to another character's main plot, and they'd built it up in a way that it'd gone on for so long in the issue that, you know, the ranger was preparing to pull the trigger, but you also didn't know somebody was going to save John at the last minute, but then it happened anyway, but then he was alive in the next issue, and the explanation for John's survival just had me scratching my head. But remember, I'm a stupid reader. One thing that I was really okay with was him being part of a family built up entirely of people called John Freeman. Like, every one of his brothers was called it, his dad was called it, and I was just cool with that. It reminded me of George Foreman. But it's those kind of abstract details that I really like, and when I was talking about it having this sense that there's more to the world than we actually know, it was kind of that thing that I was referencing. So yeah, there was a lot of great stuff in this book, but you've probably noticed that I haven't mentioned a lot about the factions, the other characters, and probably the majority of the rest of the book. I can't change my opinion, and I know some people are going to disagree with me. Some people may even not like me because of the fact that I'm going to say this, but I just didn't care. I kept trying at certain points to get reinvested in it and to say, no, this is the part you have to understand the Chosen, you should learn all of these factions, you should care more about what was going on, but it still just didn't happen. Who knows if that would change on a second read-through, but I still can't even name the Seven Nations off the top of my head, which I think boils down to what my main problem was. East of West had a great story in it. It had all the components for this to be an absolute 10 out of 10 blockbuster, but it was diluted by everything else. There was this constant sense of just throwing shit at a wall and seeing what stuck, but it didn't matter what stuck anyway. Like, yeah, there were other characters that were cool, like Wolf and Crow, but for me, when I hear people talking about this, and I've heard people say that this is a 10 out of 10 book, and in no way would I ever want somebody to change their opinion of something that they enjoyed just because of the fact that I've talked about it for a bit of time, but with how much is going on in this, I can't see it being the case that there's somebody that loves absolutely every part of this and every single storyline that's going on in it. That's sort of where I'm at that. I feel like there's this middle ground that maybe I'm judging it a bit too harshly, but I feel like people are praising it a bit too much. And I guess that's what it really boils down to. It's all about perspective in the same way that there's different sides of the argument in this very book. I feel like there's different sides to the argument when it comes to the book itself. So if you were watching this review to hear somebody talk about Belle Solomon or Madame President, You'll be disappointed here because I didn't care enough about them to really form an opinion on them, which from where I'm standing can be worse than having something negative to say, because at least something negative means that that thing had an impact on you. But going back to it, if you were that type of person that that's what you're watching this review for, I'm sure that there's other people that you could talk to about it that really love those parts of the book because it seems like I'm completely in the minority with this one. This is my final verdict, and there's an ongoing debate on whether or not it's better to be doing work for creator-owned titles or doing something for the big two publishers. Personally, I think you can make arguments for both sides of that debate, but I don't think that East of West would be one that was in favour of it. Nor do I feel like this is truly Jonathan Hickman's magnum opus. It felt like it was trying to be, and that's what it was aiming to do. You know, you had this grand law, you had this build-up to an apocalypse, and literally every other character was talking about the meaning of war. And in a similar way, hype can be as destructive to this book is what is to the characters that are in it. With the general consensus and the overwhelming majority of opinions being that this is one of, if not the greatest image comics of all time, I went in with very high expectations, especially because I really enjoyed Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four and his run on Avengers. So if you're somebody who can get into East of West without that hype being there before you even turn that first page and you want a story that does have this very rich lore and a stacked cast of characters that are all interesting in their own way, then I think that will be something that
that you will get a great experience out of. Because even though I wasn't blown away by this title like I was expecting to be, it was still well written, the theme never feels gimmicky like it probably would have been easy to do so, and the art is superb throughout. So who knows, maybe a few years from now I'll go back to this title with my expectations reduced and I reckon that I'd have a much more enjoyable experience. But that's not still to take away from the fact that I do know that there are people who do enjoy this on the first time reading it, so if it sounds like it's something that you would enjoy, I reckon it would still live up to the hype for you. And at the end of the day, you have to read books that you're going to enjoy, and my opinion on it shouldn't sway what you think about it, but still, with that being said, I personally can only really give this a score of 60%. Woof woof. So that's my review of East of West and I'd like to hear what you guys think about it. If somebody disagrees with you, just be respectful about it in the comments below. And like I said, we're going to have a discussion on a Reddit page, so make sure that you check us out there. There's going to be a link in the description. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, why did you get this far? Subscribe if you're new here and click the bell notification so that you never miss a video. And if you do want to pick up these books or any other, I'd recommend checking out our sponsor, Organic Price Books. They've got fast shipping, great packaging, and if you use code woof woof, you will get $2 off your order. But my next review is going to be on Brian K. Vaughan's Paper Girls, but until next time, just make sure that you stay safe, stay reading the best books that you can find, and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof! See you at the next video.